Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. It's time for the solution video that accompanies Workout Wednesday 2020 week 15. Can you create a chart with a, with a dynamic week start? So this challenge, again, it's ripped from something that I did, similar to something I did uh, at work recently. Part of the interesting thing about this challenge was trying to find a way to trend what I'll call seven day periods or choose basically any start or in our case an end date and there's pretty much equivalent for a week and to trend the, the other six days, so to speak, that are associated with it. The goals of this um, visualization, and let me actually go to the Tableau public version, were to be able to kind of choose a start and stop of the end week and to trend them all in a row and to not be tied down to starting or defining it sort of up front if it's going to go Sunday to Saturday or Monday to Sunday, whatever, you know, some of the built-in features capabilities are of uh, Tableau whenever you define the the date, the week start. Uh, this was actually sort of a response to some of the dynamically changing data environments that we currently live in, knowing that every week is not exactly like the last one and there's a lot of change in news that's happening. And so to some degree, it's almost more advantageous to start thinking about how weeks trend comparative to one another based on the start or end day of the week. Again, those being sort of equivalent as I go into the challenge uh, versus the traditional uh, Sunday to Saturday or whatever, you know, normal <clears throat> week start you would have. Uh, other goals of this visualization were to be able to kind of compare a number of weeks with the uh target week, so to speak. So I'm going to go ahead and type in a 13 and you can see that the number of lines that are there is going to increase with that target week always being that uh, dark uh, green uh, so that you know which one it is. There are a lot of little formatting things that I added in here. One of the things that we've noticed and I just got done recording the challenge solution for week 11 is that there's a lot of Friday data that is missing from Superstore. So one of the things I was conscious of whenever I built this challenge was to deal with things like there is null data, missing data for days of the week, but we still want to show that in our in our lines and we still want to draw attention to our audience with that. So that's one of the kind of final finishing steps that I'll go through. I said it in our blog, in the blog post, I designed this to be really fast so that you could get a lot of the technical elements, the line chart really quickly. I think that there were a couple of you that got hung up on the final finishing steps of the tooltip in particular and how the lines actually are drawn. So hopefully you'll find some real benefits to that in addition to the sort of dynamic use case of defining how weeks are going to be trending. So let me go ahead and jump into Tableau Desktop. Okay, so again, here's our final solution. I'm gonna go ahead and start from scratch with a rebuild. Now, the first thing to say is we said we wanna be able to trend our weeks and pick almost a start date or an end date. For me, what, in my mind, it was easier to pick a target end date and to kind of trend back from there. So very similar to uh, other challenges, this starts with a parameter. So we're going to have a parameter end date and we're going to have it just be an entry point from our user so they can define basically the last day of a week. So I believe that this is a Monday. So in this scenario, our dates will be trending back from Mondays and uh, we'll go Tuesday to Monday, I suppose. Now, the first thing to do is probably to build out the week for the plot. So what I ended up doing was figuring out uh, the number of weeks from the target end date that our current date is or our order date, our date inside of the data. So you can see that I am taking the date difference in days from our end date minus six. So last day, take six days away from that, you'll get to the first day of the week and comparing that with the order date or the original date. I'm taking that uh, date diff and I am dividing it by seven or a week. So if this were, um, you know, 14 days was the difference there and we divide it by two by seven, we'd get two. I'm using the floor function, which might be a little bit of an overkill. I looked at some solutions and some actually had like integer or you didn't have anything there. So the floor is basically just ensuring that we're rounding down in all situations for the result of this uh, division by seven. So if it were, you know, 15 divided by seven, we would still get to two point something and that would just round down we take the integer that is lower of the two so the floor of that integer and let me actually go ahead and bring on 
our order date as days. And let's get that going so we can see what this is going to start to look like. So here's our entire, let me go ahead and put sales on there so we can actually get a line chart. Here's all of our data. Uh, we wanted to find the weeks. We also wanted to find the weeks to show that is another parameter. So we just have an integer parameter. They can type in a value. We want to choose the number of weeks to include. This is very similar to the last challenge that I presented to you guys in week 11, but this time it's actually dynamic. So that calculation will probably look similar. So we're going to go ahead and look at this true false weeks to show. So the week for the plot. So this is actually kind of different math. If you remember the other one, I actually just calculated that difference and said, was it less than or equal to uh, the, it was a d static number, but it would basically be the parameter in this situation or not. And while I've kind of done that because of this week for plot logic, which we will use later on, it'll basically define those lines for each of our weeks. I've chosen to use that calculation here instead. So let me go ahead and bring that on just so that you can see us limiting our data to a smaller subset. There you go. And let me go ahead and bring on this week for plot. And let's see what we do if I put it on color. That's probably good enough. So now you can see we are separating out our different weeks. Here is our target week that ends on December 30th. That is week zero. And then we are going back from there the week before that and so on and so on and so on all the way back to our 10th week before. And this is what we really want to do is we actually want it to start, um, like I said, in this scenario on the 24th, which is a Tuesday if I'm staying honest, and then going up through a Monday. So instead of it being continuous where we've got this continuous line, basically what we want to do is we want to repeat these lines across everything. So to deal with that, we can go ahead and uh, change our date over to a day of week calculation. So to do that, here's what our calculation is. I'm using date name here. So date name is just gonna return the name of it. So that's a little bit different than date part. Date part will return the number, but date name will return the name. So you can see in the helper here that the date name of a month for this when it's uh, April 15th, 2004, is going to be April. So very similarly, the week date of the order date, the weekday name will be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So let me go ahead and drag that on and let me take our day of order date off. And let me make this a line chart and I'll make it the entire view. Okay, so this is really the start of everything. You can see that Tableau is smart enough to start on Sunday and go up through Saturday, our normal days of week uh, order with which we would typically see things if we haven't adjusted it. But now we have a line for every single week that is the target data that we are looking at and we've got our current week. So the first thing I would do is actually, let's just uh, isolate out our target week because that's going to be some low hanging fruit. I'm going to take our week of plot off of color and just have it on detail. So now nothing is color. And I built out another calculated field that's just, hey, is the week for the plot zero? Yes or no? Boolean, as you guys know, I like to use a lot of Boolean calculations. And so we'll just put that onto color. So when we do that, it's kind of nice because yes, we could probably just go through that color palette and assign every color uh, to gray except for zero. But if we have it be dynamic, then we don't know how many that's going to go back. So you could get to an extreme with assigning everything a gray. But instead, we're actually doing something a little bit easier, which was basically saying, is it is it the target week? Is it zero or not? And if it's not zero, we can assign it one color. And if it is, we'll just assign it the other one. This also makes it really easy for uh, sorting your lines. One of the things that it's probably hard to tell in the final result, but one of the things I made sure to do is have the uh, current line at the front. So by just sorting it visually on our color legend, we can ensure that it goes to the front of all of the other lines. So we're getting pretty darn close to the final solution. I'm going to swap back over to what's on Tableau Public and I'm going to set my end date to 10 24 2019 so that we can see what that looks like just so that we're keeping it identical to the final that you're going to be reviewing. So those are trending uh, Friday to Thursday right? So a week would be the 18th to the 24th. And so you can see, obviously, I have not yet trended out to start on Fridays and go through Thursdays. Tableau is still sticking with its main logic. So to deal with that, I actually ended up sorting our days of the week. So here's the final uh, calculation for it. We're sorting it in ascending order by the day of week number. So let me show you that day of week number calculation. 
So this is a little wonky, again, because we've got this sort of like end date of the week and we're trying to find the beginning date of the week. So we're looking at three of sort of a value or two evaluations. So the first is if the order date is greater than or equal to the start date, basically, then we're just going to call it the day of the week. We're going to find the date part of that week date associated with it. If it's not, we're going to just add seven days to the uh, final uh, value so that it is offset. And that just takes care of um, days being out of sync and basically starting over when we go from one to seven so you don't get in like a weird scenario where it's uh, not trending in the, the number that you want it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and sort by a field in ascending order. We're going to use that day of the week calculation that I just mentioned. And we're going to take the minimum of it. We don't need to over aggregate it. So just taking the minimum, they should, in theory, all be the same number. So taking the minimum will be great for our uh, situation. OK, so now we've got like pretty much 80% of the line chart. And we're looking at some finishing steps here. So the first thing that we'll notice with the final product here is that, um, let me go back to you here, is that our line actually does have some information that goes down to zero when there's nothing there. So if you were to, the way, so I saw a lot of different ways to solve this problem. There's one really easy way, and this is one of the best parts about formatting when it works to your advantage in Tableau. The way I would solve this is if you have a continuous field that is drawn as an axis on a visualization, on a chart, if you go to format and you format the pane, you can determine how special values are going to show up. Do you want to show them at the indicator, which is the null indicator, so that box on the side that would typically show up? Do you want to show it, do you want to connect the line so that they are unbroken? Uh, do you want to show it at the, sorry, there's connect lines, or do you want to show it at the default value? Default value varies depending on the type of measure that you have. Uh, for a sum of something that is an integer or a float, it's zero. So by that simple step of showing at the default value, you can see that we are now connecting that line here that goes to Friday, even though there's nothing there. So that's perfect. That's step one. Uh, the other thing that was done, and let me actually go back to my final one, is it says no sales whenever there's no sales. It doesn't say zero. It says no sales. That's also within this formatting section. So let me go ahead and click back on my sum of sales and go to my pane. So it's showing at the default value, and I'm just going to say no sales. And that's going to be the text. Now you'll see that if I hover over, you know, whatever week negative three is, which we'll figure out what that is, there are no sales. It shows at zero, but we see that it's no sales. And that's perfect because uh, we can communicate that there's no sales. So it's not really zero sales. I mean, it is zero sales, but we've at least uh, taken advantage of this formatting a little bit more uh, to an advanced level to to communicate something different to our end users. And we don't have the um, unbroken lines anymore. Okay. So we're really, really close to the end. Some other things to do, which is where we are going to spend a little bit more time, is dealing with how the weeks are trending. So the weeks are trended Friday to Thursday and the day of the week that shows up in the tooltip. So the days of the week are trending from Friday to Thursday. I saw a lot of other calculations around this that I thought were a little bit more sophisticated than what I did. Maybe mine's lazy. But I saw a lot of folks actually try to figure out what the day of the week was for each of these individual dots. So the, what is the day of the week that represents whatever this piece of data is? And let me actually just bring the order date onto the tooltip as an attribute so that you can see it. That's fine when it actually has one. So 8-23-2019, what day of the week is that? Well, we know it's a Friday. It's a Friday there. So it's kind of funny because... That Friday is already there. You can use it, but how do you get the Thursday to show up and how do you go point to that Thursday? Um, how I did this was, well, I know what my, my target end date is. I know what it should be. So I'm going to go ahead and use that for both my start day of the week and the end day of the week. So my start day of the week, it has to be by virtue of how all of the other math is done, the end date minus six, and that's going to be the name day of the week. This is awesome because, you know, it's going to be the same because we're using the parameter. We're not actually really evaluating against the data. We're evaluating against the parameter. So it's just one distinct, discrete result. And you can see that it's showing up there. That's Friday. And then we do the same thing with the end day of the week. This one just doesn't even have uh, that much going on with it other than sort of evaluating what needs to happen here. 
to make sure that it shows up accurately, but it's the same concept. So we've got our start date of the week and our end day of the week. So these are Friday to Thursday. And then um, let me clean up a couple things so that we can get a little bit further. So we've got our order date. I'm going to put that up at the top so that we can start to see this. And then our weeks are trended. Just so you can start to see some of this stuff. And we'll do something like that. I think that's probably pretty close to what the final one looked like. With the goal being we want to see the date, we want to see how weeks are trended, and we want to know the sales. But then we get into this weird situation where, you know, there's no sales here. It's a null value. We've we forced Tableau to show us those lines, but how do we actually show the date associated with that uh, with that mark? And if you thought about it, there's really, there's nothing there. There's no data in the data to find that mark. So while we're visually drawing a mark, it's kind of an illusion because there's not really data there. So to deal with that, we're actually gonna use our trusty table calculations and we will use them to finish up our last step. So. Let's see if I can find what we did here. So let me see if I built it in this guy. Let's see. I think that I must have lost it along the way, but we will rebuild it. So let's start with this. So we'll call it the pretty order date. Okay. So the pretty order date. Like I said, we're gonna use table calculations. I have no idea why it got deleted from my solution that I'm showing you, but that's okay, we'll rebuild it on the fly. So uh, we'll start with this. So at its best, it's gonna be the order date, right? It's gonna be the ATTR order date, that's what it is. That's just the min and the max are the same. We're only aggregating to the day, so they should be the same. That's fine for um, when there's actual data. But if there's not, then we can actually use the lookup and we can offset it if there is something that's null. So let's, we could do something like this, which basically is saying, okay, if the order date happens to be null, then go look to the, the left of it and see what that is. And then add one day to it. So if our order date is null, then guess what? Go add one date to the date expressly to the left of it. And this will be somewhat helpful. Let me go ahead and bring that onto our tooltip. Let's see if I can just drag it on, to see if it'll show up. Put the pretty date in there. So we've got some time, but that's okay. Let's see if we can find any other zeros that would maybe show up. I got one. Let's see if we can find one. I don't see any, but um, that's okay here. So let's set it like this. Okay, there we go. I finally found one. So now um, I changed the way the trending is, and this is basically giving away the second part of the solution. So I changed our trending so we could actually look to the left to look to the day before. So this is a Friday, there is, was no sales on the Friday, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna look to the left. We're gonna look to the left, that was a Thursday, we're gonna add one to it. So by, by virtue of the table calculation, we can figure out uh, what day it was. Now again, um, we have to be able to do this essentially both directions because we don't know how trending is gonna go. So we're just gonna do, put on top of this the other half of this. So we're just gonna do another if null, and we're gonna wrap this entire uh, condition in there, and we're just gonna add on this last piece. We'll see how hard it is for me to adjust it. We're gonna do a negative one there, and we're gonna do a positive one here. Let me close some of our parentheses, and let's see where we need to fix this a little bit. Let's see. That's closing right. I think we need one more right here. There we go. <laughs> okay. 
So if we go through this entire process, if we look at the order date and it's null, and then we uh, add one to the order date by looking to the left one and it's still null, then we're going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to look at the order date, we're going to look to the right, and we're going to take one away. And now we should see that it doesn't matter which direction we go with this, we're always going to have something that represents that order date. So now let's go back here. Look, we've got our 1018. That one, we know it's expressly looking to the right instead of the left. The final step here is to adjust your formatting for this, uh, the date formatting, so that it looks uh, prettier. I can't remember what it was if it was the short date, but that's all that I would do there. And then to take your normal order date out of the tooltip. So you're using your pretty order date. And that's the last step. That's probably the most complicated piece of this whole entire challenge. Once you kind of figure out the way the dates work and how to do the week trending, your last steps are, are kind of finishing steps. But it is important to remember that you can utilize both table calculations and just built-in uh, formatting inside of Tableau to your advantage in these situations. And then that ends us up with the final product, which gives you a line chart that you can trend. Start and end date of your choosing, basically the end date, will determine what the start of the week is, and you can choose the number of weeks that you want to go back. I hope this has been helpful. Thanks.